Hello folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard coming to you from Watchman Studios with another Watchman video broadcast. I want you to consider something just for a moment. What if, what if they're right? What if, what if the people that have seen a Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, Yowie, Abominable Snowman, um, it's called by different names throughout the world because it's more than just something seen in Northwest Washington, Northwest America, Canada, Alaska, literally seen all over the world. What, what if, what if they're right? What if one person, what if the Patterson Gimlin film, that famous, uh, I think it's an eight millimeter, might be 16 millimeter movie. Um, uh, Bob Gimlin and Roger Patterson, 1966, I think the year I was born, going through the woods at uh, Bluff Creek. And they film what turns out to be a female Sasquatch. That's the word the Indians call it. Now, I'm not going to talk about Sasquatch today, but... What if they're right? What if that what if that film is true? It's been examined by a lot of people. There's been all kinds of nuts showing up saying, "Yeah, I was the guy in the suit." There never was a suit. It's been proven. Jeff Meldrum, uh I said I wasn't going to talk about Bigfoot. Jeff Meldrum, anthropologist, University of Idaho, has spent his life as a scientist researching this, and I'm sure he's not gotten a lot of grants from the government to do this, but he's examined he's examined the foot patterns. He is he examined the skeletal structure of the creature in the Patterson Gimlin film and said it is not possible for it to be a suit, a human in a suit. It's not possible. The legs, the hips, the shoulders, the neck, none of it is right. Arms only bend and knees only bend in a certain way on a human and the measurements don't work out on that. What if what if people that have seen an unidentified flying object are right? What if just a few of the thousands of reports, let's say just since the 20th century and up till now, what if just a few of those are right? You know, there's more, seems like there's more pictures and video of them now because now everybody on the planet practically is carrying a camera with them in the form of their phone. They're able to shoot photographs and video of objects in the sky, including the best fighter pilots in the universe. Well, best fighter pilots in this world have photographed, videoed them uh, on missions, encountered them. David Fravor, one of the top gun pilots in the, in the Navy, uh, chased one. And his statement was, I wish I could fly one because it did things that his jet just couldn't do. What if, what if they're right? If they're right, and these unidentified flying objects are flying around in our skies, and they and they don't come from any factory here on this earth, then we have to ask, where did they come from? Then we have to ask who they are. Then we have to ask, what are they doing here? And if we believe the Bible to be the absolute truth of God, and we believe that according to scripture that Jesus Christ is the creator of all things and without him was not anything made that was made, then that leads us to a conclusion that if just one person was right about seeing an unidentified flying object, and one person was right about being abducted by these aliens, or the Bible calls them strangers, evil angels, 
seducing spirits, devils, fallen angels, whatever you want to call it, whatever makes you comfortable talking about them. But all of those words are, are correct biblically. The Bible then records for us a record of what has happened and what will happen. And of course, the key to understanding it is first you have to believe it. You have to believe what God said. And then in the times that we live in, this Bible has always been a sure word of prophecy. And I believe that it has a record in it, not only of past events, but of future events as well. Let me take you to um, a story that came out, and it made headlines literally all over the world. Uh, CNN dealt with it, Fox News, uh, NBC, CBS, all the major networks had some story about it. Uh, this actually, from what I can find out, was broken, this story was broken by the Sun in the United Kingdom. Uh, and according to their online report, they submitted a Freedom of Information Act request to the Department of Defense, to the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., to get them to release any files, videos, audios, any kind of report, any kind of evidence that they may have been holding back from the ATIP, Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program that was ran by Luis Elizondo. If you, I've talked about him several times. He's been on all the talk shows. He's been on the History Channel. Uh, he's worked for Tom DeLonge, the rock star Freemason, who just happens to have all these CIA guys working for him. You believe that one? No, I think Tom works for them. They call him former CIA people. Yet you're never a former CIA anything. Okay? You never leave the agency, the company, they call it. Here's what the Sun reported. X-Files, Pentagon releases 1,500 pages of secret documents about shadowy UFO program after four-year battle. So they spent four years going after the Pentagon saying, we know you have records, release them to us. And I'm sure the records are redacted as usual, which means they have those little black lines on them that says, you can't see these words and you can't see these names and you don't know, you didn't see this here. You're not going to see this here. Okay. Along with, now I have not found those records online anywhere. And I've got people looking, I've looked in some places that I know to look. Maybe if I won't do it, I don't even know how to do it. Some of you who might be able to get into the dark web, number one, you should probably get out of there. So I, there's probably stuff there you shouldn't be in. But if you happen to run across this 1,500-page set of documents, I would like to see them. Just letting you know. Pastor Mike online at gmail.com. Anyway, here's part of what the story says. The DIA, Department of Defense's spy arm, the Defense Intelligence Agency, that's what that means, said some portions of the documents, quote, must be withheld in part due to privacy and confidentiality concerns. But the agency added the DIA has not withheld any reasonable segregable, segregable, Non-exempt portions of the record. You try and say it. Segregable. Has not withheld any reasonable, segregable, non-exempt portions of the records. The Bombshell Freedom of Information Hall. I, I, would, I called it a dump. But anyway, we won't mince words. The Information Hall includes reports on the DIA's research into the biological. Listen to this. Biological effects of UFO sightings on humans. Now, you don't, okay, I don't believe in UFOs. I don't believe in aliens. Oh, that's all, that's all made up. And that's, you know, that's science fiction stuff. And your government, your, no, your military believes in them. Trust me, they do. They believe in them. They have spent, they said $22 million 
22 million dollars is enough money to buy the vehicles for the people who are going to work in a program. And that's about it. They've spent probably a lot more money than that. We just don't know about it. Investigating, researching UFOs, who's flying them, what their purpose is, what their plans are. And I know you've got UFO wackos all over the world that believe all kinds of weird things about them. This is the only thing I trust. All right. Um, but it mentioned the biological effects on humans, meaning that these things left behind some sort of damage to human bodies. One case comes to mind called the Cash Landrum UFO case. Two ladies Elder ladies, I think they were out playing bingo, and I think they had their one of their sons in the back seat of the car. This happened years ago in Texas. Um, sees a UFO hovering over the road they're traveling on. They stop. The thing it starts emitting some sort of goo out the bottom of it. It's having some sort of movement, and. Then it's the black helicopters all over the place. And all of a sudden the thing is able to take off and the helicopters go after it. These two ladies went to the hospital, the ER. They started getting sick. Found out that they had radiation sickness, severe radiation sickness. Now, if you believe the story of uh, uh, Rick Doty, D-O-T-Y, if you look him up on the internet on... Um, uh, Steve, uh, what's his name's channel? Anyway, if you look Rick Doty up, he does a whole thing on the Cash Landrum case. And he says that it was a captured UFO. They replaced, uh, the military replaced the power system in it with some sort of nuclear power system, which really didn't work out too well. They got the thing to fly from, I think, Nevada, Area 51, all the way down to Texas, and it started having problems. And that's where these ladies and their son or whatever got hurt really bad. They sued the United States government for their injuries and the court said, uh, you can't prove that this happened and it didn't happen and go away. And that's basically how it ended for them. Okay. Uh, but anyway, human biological effects on humans. And this includes, the story says, burns, heart problems, sleep disturbances, and even bizarre occurrences such as apparent abduction and unaccounted for pregnancy. I've been talking about this, this very thing. I've, I've done several things on UFOs. I haven't spoken much about UFO abductions. But I'm starting to research it more, not just from the various books that have been written about it, the various accounts uh, that have been uh, reported from people who said they've been abducted by aliens. You know, when somebody says, I was abducted by aliens, you go, okay, whatever. Uh, but what if some of these people are telling the truth? And if they are, where is it in the scripture? And that's what we're dealing with. Uh, if you'll notice on here, there's a, it says, read more on UFOs. And there's a story there to the right. Alien first contact could destroy religion and spark global chaos. I found that story. We're going to look at that in a moment. The article continues. The study argued it was possible to use this medical information to reverse engineer UFOs from unknown providence that may be a threat to United States interest. This is a government study. This is not a bunch of guys at a UFO conference wearing goofy hats that are making this stuff up. These are scientists and military experts at the Pentagon who wrote this study that have been investigating this. this they said that Project Blue Book was the end of the government study on UFOs. Well, now we found out that our government lied to us. When has that ever made news before? 
The report also featured a, quote, useful database which listed the biological effects of UFO sightings on humans and their frequency compiled U.S.-based civilian research agency MUFON. I went to their conference last year. It even included bizarre occurrences such as apparent abduction, unaccounted for pregnancy, sexual encounters, experience of telepathy, and perceived teleportation. Is teleportation in the Bible? Yeah. Uh, Acts chapter 8. The story of Philip. He preaches and ministers to the Ethiopian eunuch who's on his way to Jerusalem to worship. The eunuch is saved. He believes that Jesus Christ is his Savior. Here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip takes him down into the water, baptizes him. And as they come back up out of the water, Philip just disappears. And he finds himself way away somewhere else. Now, it's not like beam me up, Scotty, teleportation. It's the same idea. Okay, this stuff is right here in the scriptures. Another fascinating document included in the files sets out how to categorize, quote, anomalous behavior with encounters with, here it is, here's the list, ghosts. Are they real? According to the Bible, yes. Yetis, are they real? I think they are categorized as the satyrs. Mentioned in Isaiah 13, Isaiah 34, and other places. Spirits, are they real? Elves, they're devils. And other mythical legendary entities classed as AN3 and witness interaction with AN3 entities such as near-death experiences and here it is, here it is, religious miracles classed as AN4. Religious miracles are what you find in Deuteronomy 13, what you find in Revelation 13. I can't even turn there yet. My mind is moving so fast. Revelation 13, the false prophet, causes miracles to happen right in front of people's eyes even so much that he's able to bring fire down from heaven. And he uses those miracles to start a religion. There is going to be one religion on this earth, the religion of the Antichrist. And they're going to worship his image, which is going to cause everyone to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. There are also ratings for UFO sightings, flyby ratings and close encounter ratings, including seat close encounter four, which is alien abduction. Close encounter of the fourth kind. There was a movie called The Fourth Kind. There's a book called The Fourth Kind. And it's about alien abductions, including CE4, in which an encounter with an alien results in permanent psychological injuries or death. Poltergeist, crop circles, spontaneous human combustion, alien abductions, and other paranormal events are also categorized. And in a statement bound to excite UFO hunters around the world, the report says, quote, classified information exists that is highly pertinent to the subject of this study, and only a small part of the classified literature has been released. See, I told you so. They admitted that we've got oodles and gobs, that's a military term, of information stored up somewhere that nobody's ever going to, it's never going to see the light of day, and we're never going to release it. This is only a small, this is what they call the tip of the iceberg, is what it is. Um, now, that article that I referenced earlier about changing everybody's religion. Alien first contact could destroy religion and spark global chaos, even if they come in peace, warns ex-Ministry of Defense investigator. That man is Nick Pope. He's the one that makes all the talk shows. He's one on the History Channel, he, Ancient Aliens. I mean, he's everywhere. He got, he got a post in the 90s, working for the Ministry of Defense, investigating UFOs. He did his tenure. I don't know. I forgot how many years he was in. But the guy's made a killing. 
after, well, not literally kiddling people, but he's made a fortune going out telling everybody what he can't tell everybody because he's still under the British Secrecy Act. He can't tell United Kingdom secrets, but he can tell that, boy, maybe they are real. Maybe this is true. Anyway, here's what the article says. He, meaning Pope, speculated we can encounter a new raft of alien religions challenging our belief systems with the space civilization wanting to convert us to their faith. Or the aliens could be on the other side of the spectrum, a hyper-advanced race who have dismissed all faiths as, quote, primitive superstitions. That's not going to happen. Mr. Pope told the Sun online, quote, Either way, it would be the biggest culture shock for religions that they have ever encountered. It would shake them to their very core. It would destroy them. It would fundamentally change the nature of human society. How's that for a Nick Pope impersonation? I thought it was pretty good myself. Coming from a guy from Arkansas. Other consequences of first contact would see, quote, a dogfight and Desperate scramble between nation states over how to exploit alien technology in a new space race. And we would have to overcome challenges such as how best to communicate with aliens. Stop right here. In my notes, and I've used these verses before, God warned us. He warned Israel. But he's warning us because it's in our Bibles of a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Not a nation whose tongue you don't know, but eventually you'll learn to communicate. It's not what he said. A language that they would never know. Ever. Okay? Though I speak with the tongue of men and angels. How to communicate with aliens, trying to work out if we could decipher their language and who would act as Earth's spokesman. I would say Leonard Nimoy, but he's already dead. Contrary to Hollywood, I don't think we could fight off any alien invasion. So fingers crossed, they do come in peace. Nick Pope. Not, again, not, not dead on, but not bad for a Nick Pope impersonation. Now, I started out with that to get back into the series that we've been looking at. And again, I'm taking this one step at a time uh, to either remind you of things that I've said in the last 12, 13 years, uh, or to teach you things that maybe you've never heard me talk about. Maybe this first time you've ever listened to me and you couldn't care less for the Nick Pope impersonation. But let me share with you from the Bible what it is that we find concerning uh, UFOs, the beings that pilot them, what could possibly be their agenda, and is it even possible that humans could be not only abducted and taken, it's the name of this series, now you get it, but taken where is the question? So let's go back. Let's start in Matthew 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. If you, let me stop right here. If you remember the scene in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where everybody's gathered together at the Tower of the Devil, instead of the mountain of God, Devil's Tower, Wyoming, and all of a sudden, all these UFOs, their clouds come rolling in. Special effect done, and I've seen how it's done. It's neat effect. Um, but clouds come rolling in, and out of these clouds come all these UFOs. And they're all friendly, and they're all. Some of them even have smiles on their face. Go watch the movie. They, I've read the book how Spielberg made the movie, and he said we made them look friendly. They they, they smile. The UFOs actually smile. You'll you'll go watch it. You'll see. 
Which makes it interesting to me then when I go back over Matthew 24 and I see Jesus saying, for many Christs shall come. Many of them are coming. And it's nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Not nations, plural, but a kingdom against a kingdom. The kingdom of Christ versus the kingdom of the prince of the power of the air. Lucifer himself. So anyway, the Son of Man is going to appear in the clouds. He's coming in the with power and great glory. When people see UFOs, they go, oh, wow, that is so bright. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. And then the expletives start coming out. And that's what happens. Verse 31, he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Is it any, is it any wonder that in Spielberg's movie, the initial contact that's made between the earthlings and the aliens is done by music? Sound of a trumpet. Okay. Is it any wonder? that he wrote that into that script. I I don't believe it's a mistake, okay? Now, let me go back and read some verses uh, that I've been telling you that I was going to get to, and they involve the use of a certain number. And when we see that number, and it's a very familiar number, let me ask you the question, how long was Jesus in the wilderness uh, fasting and praying? 40 days. Okay, uh, how many days did it rain on the earth? That's exactly right, 40 days. And there's a recurring theme all through the scriptures of this 40-day period, 40 days, 40 days here, 40 days there. Guess how many days Goliath came and scared the daylights out of the Jews? Take a guess. Why is that number there? Let's read Genesis 7, verses 1 through, oh, let's stop at verse 4, shall we? And the Lord said unto Noah, Come down all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive, upon the face of all the earth for yet seven days. And I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Now, what's the meaning? What does that number 40 mean? Well, from what I can see in the scriptures, you take numbers like 40, 400, 4,000, and you reduce them down to their common denominators. In this case, 4 and 10. Let's focus on the number 4. Because I believe that anytime you see the number 4 or its variants, 4, 40, 400, 4,000, 40,000 maybe. Anytime you see that number in the Bible, it's still going to be dealing with, I believe, the same thing. And what is that same thing that it's dealing with? Let's look at another illustration in Genesis 7, verse 11. So in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. How many men built that ark? There was Noah, and Shem, Ham, and Japheth. It's interesting. That dawned on me when I visited the ark encounter in Kentucky. And I'm standing outside this humongous boat. And as you go in, they're playing a time-lapse video of them constructing this ark. And I was thinking about that. And I'm going... 
they had architects and they had people with hard hats on and carpenters and laborers and crane operators and all accountants and all they probably had i don't know a thousand people at one time working on this ark okay noah had his three sons four men built the ark and then it dawned on me i get that i get it now they had 120 years but i get the number okay and i'll explain that as i move on verse 14 they and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind every bird of every sort and they went in and unto noah into the ark two and two of all flesh wherein two and two is four wherein is the breath of life and they that went in went in male and female of all flesh as god had commanded him and the lord shut him in and the flood was 40 days upon the earth the waters increased and bare up the ark and it was lift up above the earth and i like to tell people the same thing that destroyed the earth and all the sinners of the earth was what saved noah and his, what good is a boat if you don't have water you just have a box what was it that lifted noah and his family up see which way he's going and jesus said as it was in the days of noah so shall it be at the coming of the son of man okay so what's saving noah is what's destroying the rest of the earth god has a knack for doing that okay now here's another illustration moses in the movie Ten Commandments, they don't really tell you this, but if you read the Bible, you get all the details. In Exodus 24, And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount, and Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. There it is again. He's up on Mount Sinai. Mountains are a picture of heaven. Valleys are a picture of hell. Okay? Um, Exodus 34, 28, and he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables, the words of the covenant, the 10 commandments. Now, let me stop right here. Him being up there 40 days means something besides just the time. And you could read this you, as a skeptic, you might be re reading this and say, see, that's where I don't believe the Bible. Nobody could exist upon a mountain for 40 days without drinking water. You'll never convince me of that. Hang on a second. What if Moses was in a different realm, a different dimension than just like here on the earth? I agree with you. A person can go 40 days without food. It's not recommended it's dangerous but uh i remember when i was young i would hear of these irish protesters going on hunger strikes sometimes into 50 days you can go without food for 40 days but yeah you're right you can't go without water 40 days but M moses did there was another man in the bible that did elijah he was fed one time by ravens and the Bible says he went in the strength of that meat. Guess how many days? 40 days. I mentioned, what if he was in a different dimension? Remember the 40 days that Jesus fasted in the wilderness? And I believe it's possible he didn't drink any water. And at the end of the 40 days, Satan comes and takes him to a high mountain apart. Remember what I said about mountains? And he shows him all the kingdoms of the earth all at once in a moment of time, the Bible says. How is that possible? If he was still in this dimension, it's not. But if you're in a higher dimension, you can do it in a moment of time because they say the fourth dimension has everything to do with time. And I agree, the Bible agrees with that. 
Deuteronomy 9, verse 9, when I, Moses recounts this, when I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant, which the Lord made with you, then I abode in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. I did, I neither did eat bread nor drink water. So he's giving his own account. Are, are we to say that Moses is lying? No, we can't say that. We believe that just as the Bible says, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And God's word is always truth. So let's just say that when Moses was up on Mount Sinai, when Elijah was fed, when Jesus fasted, that there was something different about them. I'll give you a story with the number four in it. Let's see if it makes sense to you. The three Hebrew young men, children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because they wouldn't worship Nebuchadnezzar's 60 cubit tall by six cubit, that's another set of numbers, idol, they were, their sentence was they were to be cast into the fiery furnace, heated seven times hotter than it had ever been heated before. So hot that the men that threw them in there got killed. When Nebuchadnezzar looks in there, he sees not three, but four men standing in the midst of the fiery furnace. And he said, the fourth is like the son of God. And when they came out of the furnace, they were not singed. Their hair was still intact. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. You can't even go into this, past the smoking area at a, 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 a restaurant without smelling like smoke. They didn't smell like smoke. What made the difference? The fourth man. He made the difference. Now, I referenced this. Luke being, Luke chapter 4, verse 2. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Acts chapter 7, verse 23. And when he was full 40 years old, speaking of Moses, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Stephen is the one telling this in Acts chapter 7, and he is teaching us the language of Bible typology because the real Moses is Jesus. And after 4,000 years from Adam, after 400 years since the last prophet spoke, Malachi, then comes Jesus Christ. Imagine that. It came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And where is that story told? In four books, right here in the Bible. Sort of in the heart of the Bible, which has four chambers. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these are called the Gospels. The word gospel means good news. Because it gives us the good news, the story of Christ coming down from heaven, like Moses did from Mount Sinai. He is the word of God. He preaches 33 and a half years. He is crucified on a cross, buried, rose again on the third day, and seen by men for 40 days. Okay? Then he ascends back up into heaven. Just at, And he's coming again. So all of these stories not only are true in their historical account, they're true in their prophetic account. They're telling things that are going to happen in the end. And what did Jesus tell us, his disciples, to do? In Matthew 28, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And he is. He's right here. He is the word of God. He's with us all the way to the end, people. Okay. That's what he said at the end of the four gospels was to go and to teach all nations the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? And that gospel then goes. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus 
tells the disciples before he ascends up into heaven, go and preach the gospel in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Four places. So, at the end, Revelation chapter 7, this is what we see happening. And after this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And that Lamb of course is Jesus Christ. Notice that the four Gospels go to people of all nations kindreds, people, and tongues. Aren't you glad that God doesn't just favor one race? Amen? God is not, our Savior Jesus is not a white man's God. It's not a white man's religion. It's not just for the Anglo-Caucasian people, the way the crazy skinheads believe. Ugh. He died for everybody. Everybody can be saved. No matter who you are, what language you speak, what kindred and family you came from, rich or poor, it doesn't matter to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I have other examples. I mentioned the four men who built the ark, four Levite priests, carry the Ark of the Covenant and God's mercy seat. That's a picture of the gospel being carried or delivered to us in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four men lowered the sick man, the man sick of the palsy. I have a granddaughter who has cerebral palsy. I'd love for her to be healed, but I'll love her anyway. I know that if she grows and she listens to her papa preach the gospel and she asks Jesus into her heart and he saves her, then when we go to heaven, she will be healed. And how many men lowered the man sick of palsy down to Jesus through the roof? Four men. Elijah prophesied to the four winds, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to come and breathe life into the dry bones. That's Ezekiel 37. Jesus instructed his disciples, I mentioned this, to preach the gospel in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, then the uttermost parts of the earth. So you see how that number four works? And remember, everything that God does a certain way, flip it upside down, turn it 180 degrees, that's the devil. So if God has his master plan, that Jesus is going to appear in the clouds and all of his disciples, those who have died in faith and those who are alive at that time, are taken up, caught up to be with Jesus in heaven and we are changed in our vile bodies to a new glorious body, then you can bet your bottom dollar the devil's got a plan that looks very similar to that. You see where I'm going with this now? So, who are these? The article that we read mentioned yetis, sasquatches, and ghosts, and devils, and spirits, and elves, and weird stuff, aliens. What are they? What are they? Well, here's the Bible telling us what they are. Ephesians 6, verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, count them, principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Four, principalities. Do you know the 
you can look this up at blueletterbible.org. The verse was Ephesians 6, 12. The word principalities, you can actually look up the Greek root of that. What is, what is said in Greek? The New Testament was written in Greek. The Greek word there is archon. It's where we get the word like archangel, A-R-C-H, archangel. He is my arch nemesis. In other words, my chief, main, number one enemy. Okay? it's So the word archon. The Gnostics were a group of occultists that were in various religious enterprises throughout history. They hid themselves well. But they believed that they had this superior knowledge and there's some people saying that John the Baptist was a Gnostic and that Jesus was his disciple and all that garbage you read in the Da Vinci Code. Okay. But in 1945, I think it was, there were some documents discovered called the Nag Hammadi Codexes. And what they were, they were a bunch of false gospel accounts or um, tales of Gnosticism, teaching Gnostic doctrine. There is a place in the Nag Hammadi codexes where it uses, it mentions the archons, which the Bible calls principalities. These are prince spirits. Uh, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Christ being the prince of peace, the chief of all peace things, okay? Um, Michael, the archangel, is referred to in the book of Daniel as the prince of the people of Israel, okay? The, there is the mention of the prince of the people of Persia. There is a mention in the Bible of Gog, the chief prince of Magog. Yes, Gog is a devil, a principality devil, an archon. And in that one place, there's a description of these archons and how they look. It was said that they look like large human fetuses, small slender bodies, big heads. Colossians 1.16 basically says the same thing. And notice the pattern of the number four. For by him were all things created that are in Number one, heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, four things. Whether they be, number one, thrones. Number two, dominions. Number three, principalities. Number four, powers. All things were created by him and for him. So it's what I mentioned earlier. If, if one person is telling the truth about a Bigfoot, if one person is telling the truth about a ghost, if one person is telling the truth about an alien encounter or an abduction or a UFO or being taken to some other strange world, if just one person's telling the truth, then it was created. And who was it created by? It was created by Jesus Christ. For what purpose? To accomplish his purpose and plan for this universe it was all done according to god let's say and it is true that all of these aliens are the enemies of god every one of them okay why did god create them why did god create pharaoh who put the egypt uh, the israelites in bondage why did God create Judas Iscariot, who became a disciple and then later turned Jesus in for 30 pieces of silver and had him crucified? Because it fulfilled... Why did God create Satan? It fulfills his purpose and his plan. What was his plan? To bring in a people of their own free will, of their own choice, who will eventually be the body, the bride of God's only begotten son, Jesus Christ. All of those who choose Jesus by faith are part of his body. We are members 
of Jesus Christ himself. And that arrangement, instead of, you know, how they used to do marriages and probably still do in some places, arrange the marriage. Okay, you're, you're going to marry my daughter. And here is, you know, a thousand drachmas for it or whatever. They don't get a choice, do they? God gave us a choice. And the only way you can have a choice is to have a tempter and a deceiver to tell you that you do actually have a choice. God put two trees in the midst of the Garden of Eden. One, he said, is the tree of life. And he said, eat all you want. The other one is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God said, you shall not eat of that tree. And the day that thou eat, that thou dost eat, you shall surely die. So what does the tempter, the deceiver, Satan, do? What does he say? Oh, God, God didn't tell you the truth. You shall not surely die. God didn't tell you this? Well, it doesn't surprise me. He doesn't want you to know that in the day you eat, you'll be as gods like I am. See the plan? A plan to change mankind into higher beings. And we're on the verge of that right now in this world. So, in the book of Daniel, there's another illustration of this. We have Nebuchadnezzar having this dream, and it's freaking him out because he can't remember the dream, but it's blowing his mind. He said, i got to remember this dream. So, the Bible says that he called on, verse 2 of Daniel chapter 1, his magicians, his astrologers, his sorcerers, and his Chaldeans. How many? Four that practiced the magic arts whose power derives from principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah, all psychic power, all occult power comes from these devils. Okay? And guess, guess who ended up interpreting Nebuchadnezzar's dream? It wasn't his magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and Chaldeans. It was, verse 17, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. Four against four. You see it now? Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places against all of us who believe and have put our faith in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Get well. Guess who wins? Let's read the. Let's read what Daniel said. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would shew the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. And in verse 37, Daniel delivers the goods because he sees an image. He tells him, you, you, there's his image in your dream, right? Nebuchadnezzar is going, yeah. And he said, the heads of gold, the chest is silver, the legs are brass, the thighs are brass, and the legs and the feet are iron, the toes are part iron, part clay. And Nebuchadnezzar is going, that's it. God told you that, didn't he? Yeah, he did. What is the meaning of it? Here's the meaning. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. How many things? One, two, three, four. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler of over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom. Fourth kingdom. Is it going to be a kingdom of the good guys or the bad guys? The bad guys. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And what did they... What does this fourth kingdom do? You know, Nebuchadnezzar ruled until he died. Then nobody has to obey Nebuchadnezzar anymore. 
Then you have the, the Persian Empire. And that fell. The Grecian Empire. That fell. The Roman Empire. And everybody that's tried to rule over everybody on the earth has always failed. Because there's always people that says, we're not going to take it. Right? They're not going to, they're not going to be ruled. Out of a group of a thousand people doing Heil Hitler, there's one guy in a picture going, I ain't doing it. Good for him. So how do you rule over everybody? Let's just say they figured out a way. What's this fourth kingdom do? In Daniel 2.43, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of of men but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron is not mixed with clay did you see what that said they principalities powers rulers of darkness spiritual wickedness in high places shall mingle themselves with man's DNA Right. Pastor Mike, are you saying that? Yes, a light just went on. Bing. Pastor Mike, are you saying that these alien hybrid stories are in the Bible? That is exactly what I'm saying. The report that we just heard about. Oh, I want to get my hands on that. When will I have time to read 1,500 pages? But anyway, the report that they have mentions that they are, have studied people who have been affected by the UFOs and the aliens, including sexual encounters like in Genesis 6 where the sons of God m married the daughters of men. unwanted and mysterious pregnancies where a woman shows up pregnant doesn't know how she got the baby and after about five months the pregnancy is just over with the baby's gone nobody knows what happened to it and many people who have told abduction stories swear that they were allowed to see their hybrid child. Some people were so disgusted in horror that they wanted nothing to do with it. But maternal instincts being as they are, most of the women, when asked, to hold their baby, did so, and immediately fell in love with their child. I know it sounds bizarre. And were it not clearly given to us in the scripture, I would say, oh, what horrible, pitiful stuff. But it was prophesied in the scriptures. And now you sort of understand these stories, these accounts, I mean, not all of them. Some people are just out there. That's why it takes a Harvard psychiatrist by the name of John Mack to filter through the people that, who claim to have been abducted and come up with at least 100 cases of people who have absolutely no psychosis whatsoever and under hypnotic regression all 100 people abducted of his case files, all of them said of the men that their seed was taken out of them in various ways. Of the women, that eggs were taken out of them. And some even give, let's say, more intimate details of things that have happened. 
And John Mack almost got fired for writing the book Abduction. But he spent the last part of his life, which mysteriously ended in England when he stepped out into a street and was run over and killed. Hmm. But he spent the rest of his life going around and telling everybody, I'm a Harvard psychiatrist. I'm not crazy. Neither are these people. And what they said happened to them happened to them. And now we have to change the way we think about the universe around us. So, again, let God be true and every man a liar. And if it wasn't for the scriptures unfolding this for us now in the days that we live in, I wouldn't believe it. But because I believe this book and I can see it more plainly now than I ever have been. And I've had help from some people who've sent me verses of scripture. Pastor Mike, I think you're right. Here's another verse. And I'm adding it to the list. I'm still doing the research on this series. But as I think we'll find out, I think God clearly warned people. Warned us, warns everybody. Anybody who can read a Bible can be warned by God that they might just be taken. I got you interested? I hope so. We'll give you more information next time. Remember, you're the reason why we do what we do. Pray for us. Pray for our ministry all around the world. Pray for the good people of Kenya that we love so dearly. And uh, God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.